if you have been following my channel for a while, then you know that I grew up as a Nintendo and Sony kid. I did own a Genesis and a Game Gear, and later on I did get a Dreamcast, but I missed out on the whole Sega Saturn experience. My folks wouldn't buy me one because one, it was too expensive, and I already had a PS1 and N64. Years later, I become interested in the system and seeing what it has to offer, which has led me to emulation. While you may argue their legality, they can be a good way of preserving little known games or ones where the company no longer exists and has little to no chance of re-release. It can also allow others that missed out on a system to get a taste for what it had to offer without having to pay crazy prices for it online. The game I'm talking about today is a good example of one that almost no one played, but a small team of translators has given a second chance in the spotlight. Hi, this is Mega Blade J, and today I'm going to be reviewing. Oh god, I I have no idea how to say this right. Uh, Zanma Chaugi Valhulian <laughs> for the Sega Saturn. I. I know I butchered that, I'm sorry. Valhulian is a turn-based strategy game made by DAT Japan. Awesome name. It was released for the Sega Saturn only in Japan in 1988. From what I could tell, DAT Japan only made this and one other game, Monster Slider a block sliding puzzle game for the Saturn and arcades. After that, seems they got out of games and decided to focus on making business programs instead. The story of Valhulian is a pretty unique one. After a horrible war, a goddess took pity on the survivors, changing a frozen barren wasteland into an eternal paradise. The people of this land formed two great nations, one that made powerful warriors and the other were gifted with magic. Both kingdoms worshipped the goddess, but only one could be her chosen people. So for centuries, they fought to win her graces. One day, Rey, the prince of the magic kingdom, along with his brother, are on a mission from the goddess to kill an outsider who managed to sneak into their paradise. While searching, Rey runs into two mysterious girls and are soon attacked by monsters. By saving them, he gets involved in a journey that lets him explore the world outside his home, fight monsters, question his faith, and the truth of his paradise. The backstory for the game is one of his strongest points, but I do feel it doesn't go far enough. The game's story feels a bit rushed to me, as if the team that made it had bigger ideas, but had to scale it down for the budget they had or the time. I do wish they went into more detail regarding the rivalry between the two nations, uh, the relationship between Rey and his brother, as well as how the goddess influences the nations before introducing the monsters. Despite the missed opportunity, I do feel that the story does have some neat plot twists and is interesting enough to make you want to see how it ends. The combat is similar to games such as Classic Fire Emblem, with each side taking turns defending and attacking each other. Units are broken down into different classes, including warriors, archers, heavy melee, and mages. Some are better at close range, while others launch powerful attacks at a distance. Each character has their own unique special moves that are represented by blocks in their status screen. These can range from healing, status ups, and attack spells. At the beginning of the game, 
can only do these one or two times per battle. But as you level up, you gain more blocks and more chances to use them. Knowing what your characters can do and efficiently using their special attacks are key to surviving the enemy onslaught. And trust me, you're going to need all the help you can get, as this game can be brutal at times. Near the beginning, you barely do any damage to your foe while they can hit you like a ton of bricks. The maps are large and contain a surprising number of enemy units, and trying to rush such a large force will result in you being wiped out. You really need to think a few steps ahead, as it is very easy for you to get surrounded and slowly see your team picked off one by one. Once you start getting more party members that can attack from a distance, or hit a wider area, you can start to develop strategies for winning down the toughest foes and keeping your people alive. One good technique that I found was to set up a wall of my highest defense characters to take the blunt of the hits, then use my mages and archers to either kill off my foes or weaken them down for my warriors to finish off. One unique mechanic is that of the team up attack. Two characters can attack at the same time to do more damage to a foe. This is especially useful for mages, as most enemies have an elemental weakness that can be exploited with a double magic attack. As the same pair attacks, they can build up trust for each other. When that trust meter is high enough, one partner can actually protect the other from an enemy counterattack. The game uses 2D sprites for the movement part of battle, and switches to 3D models during actual combat. From what I understand, the Saturn was meant to be a 2D powerhouse first before the ability for 3D was kind of slapped on the last second. Because of this, the Saturn is often seen as having weaker 3D graphics compared to the PS1 or N64. Despite this, I thought the 3D models and animation looked pretty good. While the battles can be fun, and the 3D animations look impressive, the fights themselves can take way, way too long to finish. The average fight would take about one hour to an hour and a half to get through. This is mainly due to having to wait for every enemy unit to take their turn. Even if they don't move or attack, the game will show them stand there for a few seconds doing nothing. Now, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but when there are like 30 to 50 bays on the field, that time can really add up. Fortunately, you can turn off attack animations to make turns go slightly faster, and you do have the ability to save at any time with multiple save slots. And once again, trust me, with how hard the fights are, saving after every turn will save you a crap ton of time. In between fights, you can use money earned to buy new weapons and equipment, and... Well, that's pretty much it. As far as I can tell, there were no extra dialogue between characters, or new difficulties unlocked once you beat the game. This is a pretty basic strategy game, it locks a lot of extra bells and whistles, but it was still fun. The music wasn't bad, nothing that will get stuck in your head, but... I found the battle and final level themes to be pretty good. Now, this was the first Sega Saturn game I ever played, so I can't really compare it to other uh, games on the system. But overall, I had fun with it. The first few levels may be hard, but stick with it, and you'll find a solid, challenging, turn-based strategy game. This is another great example of a game that needs to be remade. Focus more on expanding the story, building relationships between the characters, shorten enemy turns by skipping over the ones that don't move, and add a hard mode for extra replay value, and this could be a real gem. The game seems to be pretty rare, I, I had a very hard time finding any real info on it. When it comes to owning a physical copy, Amazon surprisingly had like nothing on it, and eBay only had like one for like 80 bucks. While I enjoyed the game, I would not pay that price for it. Uh, honestly, I recommend waiting for either a lower price or just emulating it. Just try it out. This has been Mega Blade J. 
If you like the review, like and subscribe. I will see you all next mission. Bye. Now, it might sound like a nitpick, 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 nit, nitwit, nit, nit, nitpick, nitpick, nit, it's a weird word, nitpick. Yeah. This is another great, hair in my mouth, hair in my mouth, yeah, yeah, God, how, how do you get hair in my mouth, God? Yeah. The graphics look pretty good. Blah. The graphics. Oh my god, my voice. Oh my voice. Puberty. Blah. And the second one here. 